Hey everybody, welcome back to the Daily Burn. This is the war room of the political revolution. Come on in. What this is is a daily inspirational show for all of us that are out there fighting every day in this political revolution in order to change our government into one that works for the people. Please like and share and comment. Any interaction in the show helps us do better in the algorithm and get out to more people. So comment because I love reading your comments. It gives me something to do. Plus, I want this to be an ongoing conversation. I want this to be a place that we gather and draw inspiration and inspire each other and share stories. So take part in the conversation. Well, now that that's all out of the way, thanks for coming to The Daily Burn. I'm your host, Sean Yankee, and today I thought we'd talk a little about change. Change can be hard, but if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. To keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is literally the definition of insanity. So embrace change. Don't fear it. Change is good. The whole point in life is to grow and become a better person. You are not who you were even a moment ago. Your past does not define you. You are always changing, always growing and evolving, and that is good. Take ownership of it. Guide it where you want it to go. This life of ours, it isn't completely random. You have much more influence over your world than you may think you do. You have the power to improve your situation. And it all starts in your mind. So change the way you think. Monitor your thoughts and start to focus on the positive and silence out the negative thoughts. Watch what you take in. Cut out the corporate media and minimize your exposure to negative people. And stop arguing with people on Facebook about everything and just start to create the change you want to see beginning with yourself. Change yourself and your own reality first. Start with you. Focus on that. Because that is completely within your control. Others are not. But when you make those changes, you inspire others to do the same. And that's how we grow our movement. We inspire others. Of all the ways to do it, I believe that is the best way. People just don't respond well to being shaken awake. They need to wake up on their own. So instead of trying to be their alarm clock, be their inspiration. Lead by example. Millions of us making the change we want to see starting right now. That is how we change the world. Each of us just focus on what we can. This whole thing isn't your job, just what you can do. We do this together. Millions of actions snowballing into a tidal wave of change. We can do this. We just have to do all that we can. Now, I include a link in the description of every daily burn to berniesanders.com. Please go there and see if there is any way that you can help out the campaign by becoming one of the more than 2 million of us that are volunteering to help get Bernie elected or donate any amount. Even if you can only donate a dollar, donate a dollar. This is a completely publicly funded campaign, and it is disgustingly expensive to run for president. And we are up against some big money interests. So do all you can. If you can donate, please do. But get a bumper sticker while you're there. And put that bad boy on your car. And then you're helping out the campaign just by driving around like normal. And little things like that really do make a big difference. You would be amazed. Try it out. Just do all that you can. That doesn't mean living Bernie Sanders in this revolution 24 hours a day. It means you capitalize on the opportunities that come your way and create all the new ones that you can. Be the change that you want to see, and trust me, it will spread on its own. And that's going to work much better than bickering with strangers online. That does nothing. And I'm guilty of it myself, but I've never changed a mind arguing on Facebook. Not once. And I've argued many times on here, as I'm sure you have as well. Social media is good, but most people build an echo chamber for themselves on here. They don't want to be right exactly. They want to be agreed with. So they surround themselves with people that think just like them. And they convince themselves that the cross-section that they've built somehow represents the world. Then they pat each other on the back and constantly reassure each other that they have have it all figured out. And that's pretty hard to break through that cycle, but it's easy to crack. These built-up belief systems are fragile. That's what the echo chamber reinforcement is for. So make cracks in it. 
Stop trying to bust through and just sprinkle the truth. The naked truth in all its glory is too much for some people. It literally breaks their mind, but when you sprinkle it and let them come to it on their own, I think it will get better results. Because nobody wants to be wrong. Nobody wants to admit they are wrong when they are. People will double down when they realize they are wrong when they're attacked. So stop attacking and start nudging. Lead people through your actions. Attacking them doesn't work anyway. Plus, we all have the same enemies in the end. We are all in this together. And this is our fight. So we're not going to do ourselves any good by alienating people. Just like they didn't do themselves any good in 2016 alienating us. When they thought they didn't need us, they do need us. And we need them. We need a good number of them. Fortunately, we don't need all of them, but we do need to wake more. We have really good momentum going. We have a very strong movement. We are doing fantastic, but we do need to wake the others. We will need them. And a lot of times people get mad at Bernie for some of his political moves and things that he's done. Uh, a good example would be pushing Russia Gate. But I believe that a lot of times, and this is just my opinion, but I think it's an informed one, that Bernie is playing to your average American voter. And your average American voter is heavily, heavily, heavily brainwashed by a weaponized propaganda machine. So sometimes I think Bernie has to do things to play to that group that you may not agree with. So Bernie plays within a different set of rules. Bernie is a politician, whereas we are activists. You see what I mean? There's a big difference. We are free to do whatever we want. We can take the moral high ground. We can, we can do those things. Bernie has to reach across to people. Bernie has to do something a little differently than we do. But we are all in this together. Bernie is only our candidate. Bernie Sanders is a great man, has a great history, a great uh, past in activism and, and spreading this message for 40 plus years. He's done fantastic work, but he is just one man. And we need to remember that. He cannot save us. No one can. We do this ourselves. Bernie has just paved the way. He's given us all the tools we need, but in the end, this is our fight. And when enough of us own that, when enough of us fully understand that and move forward and do all that we can, we will be unstoppable. That's a fact. This is the way that change happens. This is the way change has always happened. It is the only way that change will ever happen. When the people come united, come together, stand united, and demand it, they win. They do. Everyone is going to tell you that it is impossible. It's their job. The mainstream media is is going to do all they can to convince you that it isn't even happening. But it is. What's happening right now is going to go down in history as when our country changed directions. What we're doing right now is the most important fight probably in our country's history. We have the opportunity here to make massive change and to rebuild our society and our government into one that works for the people. We have the ability to guarantee health care to every person. We have the ability to give people dignity and a living wage. We have the ability to stop the destruction of our planet and to correct course before it's too late. This is our time. This is our fight. And we are going to win. 
not burning us. Just do all that you can. Keep fighting every day. And we've got this. Trust me. Thanks again, everyone, for coming. And if you shared, thank you so much. That helps more than you know. And this message needs to spread and get out there. So thank you very much. Real quick, I wanted to mention a few comments from yesterday's burn that we didn't get to. So let's go to the comments. Okay, so Royce was here. And he said, we're in this to win it. Absolutely. Um, he also said that Bernie rocked it in Iowa this weekend at the Iowa State Fair. That was amazing. His crowd was amazing. He definitely got the biggest response at the whole fair. They killed it in Iowa. The campaign just wrapped up in Iowa, and they did a, a fantastic job. And Kyle mentioned that he thought the campaign was focusing too much on Iowa right now. And they are focusing very heavily on Iowa and New Hampshire, the early primary states. Well, these are crucial states. Um, it's going to be very big that Bernie kills it in these states. But don't worry, the campaign is opening offices all across the country. That is what their big focus is on right now. But they are focusing heavily on Iowa, and it's because Iowa is so important. Unfortunately, the way things are set up, these first primaries are going to be a very big deal. And Iowa is the first of them. So Rob said Bernie's Joe Rogan is past 8 million views now. It is doing awesome. And the comment section is gold. Get over there and check that out because we are turning a lot of voters on that Rogan experience uh, appearance. That was a great appearance for Bernie, and that was very smart to do that. I also asked you guys what you thought about the Sunday watch party. We had been doing a watch party on Sundays to recap the week, and I, I noticed it's not getting much of a turnout. So I was wondering if you guys thought we should still do that moving forward. Noticed a couple people said we should go ahead and just take Sundays off. So I don't know. I'm not sure what we'll do. It's not hard for me to do the watch party. And even if one or two extra people see it, that's worth it to me. But um, Alyssa was here and she asked how I would best explain the cost versus benefit of Medicare for all to a Republican. I deal with this all the time. Um, one of my best friends on Facebook that I've met on here is actually a Trump supporter and he likes a lot of Bernie's ideas but doesn't see how they're going to get paid for. Um, I try to help him to see that yes taxes would go up but your health care premium and your health care expenses go away. So you have a net gain financially. Even if your taxes were to double, which they're not going to. But that's how I would explain it to a Republican. Um, use the Koch brothers study. The Koch brothers were very nice and did a study for us and proved that Medicare for all is not only the better system, but is cheaper. So it saves trillions of dollars over 10 years. Show them that. And uh, we were making fun of the landline polls. We had someone here that uses a landline and... Uh, I apologize. I didn't think anybody still used landlines. And then Jennifer was here and asked me to fix the hashtags below me. Um, the top one used to say, we're going to win. She didn't think that was very clear. So now it says, we are going to win. I want to make sure it's crystal clear that we are going to win. So we fixed that hashtag. And thanks for that input, Jennifer. Because you're right. It was a little vague. But now it's cleared up. Um, that's it for the comments. We had a big turnout yesterday. Thank you. A lot of guys, a lot of people commented. A lot of you guys is what I was going to say. Commented, and that really helps us. It helps us get out better, and it helps us in the algorithm. So I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. The next thing we're going to get into is the news. So come with me, and we're going to head on over to the newsroom. I picked out a couple stories for you guys. Okay, so today we're going to start over here on Fox, and this headline is Sanders' campaign fights media narrative that White House bid is slipping. Um, sure, you've been following the fake rigged-ass polls. They now say that Bernie is down to 9% with Biden at 28. But from the article, Senator Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign is pushing back against what they call a faulty narrative in the media that the independent senator for Vermont's White House bid is slipping. 
While you may not know it from recent media coverage, Bernie Sanders is on a positive trajectory in his campaign for president, as evidenced by multiple data points the campaign argued in a memo released Monday morning. Um, Jeff Weaver, in a conference call with reporters, touted the campaign's latest fundraising figures, including contributions from 850,000 donors, 2.5 million donations overall, and 27.5 million in cash on hand. So there are a lot of numbers pointing to the fact that Bernie is actually winning. So the article goes on to talk about <laughs> people stopping supporting Bernie Sanders, like Ron Abramson of BOW New Hampshire, who was a big Sanders supporter in 2016, but this time is backing Warren. I don't care. And this is a hit piece. Bernie is not polling at 9%. That is poll shit. For our next story, I wanted to squeeze a positive one in here because I'm going to have two Fox stories today uh, because there was a lot of hit pieces today. So I wanted to pull them out and so we could deal with them and just know about them moving forward. But this one here is from Common Dreams, and it's about how Bernie Sanders is acing the electability test as another poll shows Senator crushing Senator shows the Senator crushing Trump in the general. This is the fifteenth straight poll that shows Bernie defeating Trump. Um, so the brand new poll from Survey USA shows Bernie at fifty percent, up eight percent, and Trump at forty two. In response to the surveys, the camp. The Sanders campaign pointed to the senator's strength among independent voters as evidence that he is the candidate best suited to take on Trump in the general election. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yet another poll finds Bernie Sanders would trounce Donald Trump in a head-to-head -head matchup, says Faye Shakur, Sanders campaign manager. If it went into the candidate's name, I believe elite circles would find this consistent stat newsworthy for the electability argument. Sanders comes out atop the Democratic pack among independent voters who prefer him to Trump by 10 points. Now, like I said, today we have two Fox stories, and this one is a weird hit piece. This one is about climate change. Bernie Sanders, climate change poses a bigger threat to America than ISIS. 2020 presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders said climate change represents a bigger threat to national security than ISIS or Al-Qaeda during a campaign speech in Des Moines, Iowa. The intelligence agencies say the same thing, but anyways, I digress. For years... Four years ago, I came here to Iowa and I was asked, what is the major national security issue we face? And people thought I'd say ISIS or Al-Qaeda, and those are big issues. The answer that I gave in terms of national security is climate change. So here's the hit piece part of the article. Sanders has been an outspoken advocate of government intervention to combat climate change, but also spent nearly 300000 on private air travel in October 2018. Sanders' 2018 campaign committee paid $297,685 on October 10th to New York-based Apollo Jets, a charter jet company used by famous sports stars. The expense was for transportation for the senator's nine-day, nine-state tour to support Democratic candidates up and down the ballot ahead of Election Day, said Ariana Jones, senior communication advisor for Friends of Bernie Sanders. But they're using that as a hit to say, oh, look, look how much he's flying for somebody... Who cares about climate change? Oh, there's my friend Robert Stanley's podcast. That's what I was listening to before the show. But look how much Bernie's flying around. You know, look at that. How can he claim to care about climate change when he's flying around so much? But it's just nonsense. But that's what they're talking about in the news. And that's what I figured we'd cover today. Um, still pushing the fake polls. Still media silence on Bernie Sanders. Same thing. The corporate media is so predictable it's really sad when we first started doing news on this show we used to do know your enemy and I would go through all the corporate media and I would pull out anything I thought we'd be dealing with every day I quickly found out that the corporate owned media is very repetitive and they don't have a lot of news stories they just move the same shit around the page and they push the same agenda you get the same thing no matter where you go you just get a different flavor of it basically but um like I said, that's it for the news. Now let's get into Bernie events and get into what's going on with the campaign. So Bernie and the campaign just wrapped up a trip in Iowa where they had nine events. Um, I think that's the second trip in less than a month to Iowa. So they are focusing very heavily on Iowa. Kyle was right about that. But like I said, Iowa's going to be very important. And they have some new rules 
that they're throwing in to the caucuses where they're allowing people to vote by phone. So we're going to be dealing with some shenanigans in the caucuses. We want them to be huge. We need our turnout to be so massive that there is nothing that they can do to rig it. That's how we win. We're going to overwhelm them. And I think that's what Bernie's preparing for. So they are going back to Iowa on the 19th. And they will have their softball game. They have a softball game where Bernie's staff plays softball against the press. And they'll be having that at Iowa's iconic Field of Dreams baseball park. So hopefully that gets some coverage. And I hope that the Bernie staff crushes the press. Crush them. Run up the score. Destroy them. <laughs> That's what's going on with Bernie and the campaign. You want to stay informed with Bernie events? Text Bernie to 67760 and that will get you in the texting program and volunteers like me will text out Bernie events and keep you informed with what's going on in the campaign. Another great way is to get the Burn app. You can get that from wherever you get your phone apps and watch this show because I'll tell you what's going on with the Bernie campaign every day right here on the Daily Burn. So that's what's going on with the campaign and we have made it to the end of another Daily Burn. You guys rock. I want to thank you so much. I was going through the comments from yesterday's burn, and it really filled me with hope how much positivity that I saw in there and how many new faces. It is really cool that the show is growing and getting out to more people, and I know that has everything to do with you regulars that are really sharing the hell out of the show, and I appreciate you. Um, I want this to get out. I, I created this show because there needed to be a show like this. We need somebody out there telling people you can do it, you know, and nobody was, you know, I watch a lot of independent media and a lot of independent journalists are way too preoccupied with letting everybody know how hard and how rigged this all is. And that's true. That is true. It is going to be hard. It is rigged, but we're not going to get anywhere by sitting around and complaining about that. The only thing that's going to work is if we stand united, move forward, use our vote and our voice, and make this change happen. We have to do the work. This is our fight. But that they leave that out. You know, a lot of these independent journalists, some that I really like, they always leave that out. I think that's irresponsible, you know, because you break people's spirits. You tell them all the hardship and all the struggles but don't point them in the right direction. You know, and I think that's one thing that they're leaving out. I think that's a big key that they're missing. You know, and if we want to advance our society, we need to teach people. You have to do this yourself. No one's going to do it for you. No hero is coming to save us. We are the ones we've been waiting for. So thank you to every one of you that is out there every day doing all that you can to make this country better and to win this revolution. We are in a marathon, not a sprint. So pace yourself, you know, take care of yourself, keep your mental state in check. You know, we got a long way to go, but we are kicking ass and I'm very proud of all of you. Thank you guys so much for watching the Daily Burn. We'll see you guys again tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. for a brand new episode. Thank you so much.